Welcome to the Share Groupie Podcast, where we share ideas on how to help businesses grow and prosper in the online world. Join host, Chief Share Groupie, Claire Sandbrook, as she discusses her digital journey and how Share Group is helping thousands to keep their business flowing and growing. Here on the Share Groupie Podcast. So hello everyone and welcome to Share Group on the Sofa. I hope that you're all in a good place and looking forward to the weekend. I can't believe it's Thursday again and uh, we're, we're nearly heading to the weekend. So uh, today I want to introduce my guests, uh, Jean and Mark from uh, digital marketing agency, Lead Intuition. Hello guys. Hi Claire. Howdy. And as we always do, we give us a shout out to our number one fan, Ross. So, hey, Rossi, how are you today in North Baltimore? Hi, Ross. <laughs> well gone, Ross. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you're, you guys are in Norfolk today, right? Um, you, we are. Very hot and sticky and melting Norfolk. Okay, nice to have some Norfolk oh, yes. today. Um, <laughs> we're not hail from Norfolk, but at least you're in the county, right? So that's nice for us. Um, okay. So we want to talk about digital marketing, and I know you have some brilliant tools in your toolbox to help our community uh, listening into this uh, with this huge topic, but uh, it's coming down the line at everybody, and everybody wants to go digital, but how can they do it? Or I know you guys can help them. So um, I don't know who's going to go first, but how did you end up in marketing? Shall I go first, Mark? Off you go. <laughs> we, we, had different we had different pathways. Um, I started my career at 18 in publishing, and I stayed in publishing for about four or five years, but got to know a lot of people in the agency market and thought, that looks pretty cool. I want to try and do that. So I jumped ship and ended up in an agency and uh, worked my way to the top, ended up running my own agency, my own creative studio, and then decided for another career change. I became a marketing manager in one of the largest print companies in the UK. Um, And that was interesting, but I realised that I missed working directly with clients. Having just one client wasn't enough for me. I, I wanted to work directly with clients again. So I went back to the agency market, only this time I went back as a self-employed marketing consultant. So I took all of the skills that I'd learned in a very substantial career. I won't say how substantial because it does age me. But I went and took all of those tools and started to use them to help small businesses, medium businesses. And, um, and then I met Mark. Okay. All right. So you, did you tell me you were on Fleet Street? Were you in you, you were part of the, the publishing? I was. I mean, I spent quite a lot of time working for the publishing side of business, but it was on trade mags. Um, and then I became a recruitment advertising manager. So I worked for um, very, very large recruiters who worked with people like Marks and & Spencer's and Ford Motor Company, and I was privileged to work on the computerization of the stock, stock exchange. Wow. So over a four or five year period, I helped recruit all of the people that shaped the first digital explosion in financial services because there was nothing before then. Everything was written by hand. Mm. So it, it was a privilege and I learned an awful lot about the technology at that, that time. But it was years later before I actually started to use that te- technology myself. We may, we may have queued up for a sandwich in the same sandwich bar on Fleet Street. Absolutely. Cheapside was my stomping ground and Moorgate. Yeah, well, cheddar cheese was mine. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> there you go. So, um, Small World. Now, Mark, so that was Jean's journey. So how did you get to be in marketing? Well, for the first 10 years of my life, I was a fully fledged engineer working in central London and latterly in Aberdeen in the oil and gas industry. And in the late 90s, 98, 99, 
I was headhunted and taken to a company in Houston, Texas, where you know, over the years I rose to the rank of vice president of sales and marketing. It was a, you know, we were selling and marketing, you know, highly engineered electronic products for the oil and gas industry. And that's how I became in marketing. I, before that, I'd done engineering and a lot of sales type engineering, uh, product management, that kind of thing. The, the marketing aspect of it sort of came somewhat later. But I'd been exposed to several managers over the years for whom marketing meant very different things. Um, one manager for him, marketing was the, the logo, the color of the brochure, the typeface, and the image we projected to the world. And to another boss, for him, marketing was all about mar how big's the market, what's my share of the market, how do we get a bigger one, et cetera, et cetera. And truthfully, you know, between them, marketing is all of those things and a lot more. So I had a very rounded background in marketing, got dumped into a job of sales and marketing. And um, that was really where my journey with digital marketing commenced because I realized we're a small company in Texas, but we have a lot of business in Saudi Arabia, in Asia, in Singapore, and Malaysia. How do we reach those people without running up an airfare that we can't afford? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that explains your fascination with flowcharts. Now that I know you're an engineer by background. <laughs> they make so much sense. <laughs> I'm married to an engineer, so I understand this whole kind of logic, logical approach to marketing. Um, which is needed, isn't it? Because otherwise you can get sort of carried away with the brand and the logo and the color when actually what you really want is the business. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, uh, pure uh, and uh, simple. Yeah, yep. out of all that activity. Now, um, uh, now we found each other, Jean, through B and I, didn't we? We were in B and I in, in in Norfolk, so we have that we have that in common, and to thank B and I. Um, I'm a big BNI supporter, and uh, it's great. I mean, I don't know how our paths would have crossed actually if we if we hadn't. Totally, and we have so many people in common through that BNI connection. I think that's one of the best things that BNI offers is the chance to meet people from different walks of life doing yeah. different jobs. Yeah, but you could have knocked me down with a feather when I came across your agency, Lead Intuition. Um, because you were talking a language that I was trying to decipher, and that is one of marketing automation, um, which uh, on the sounds of it, or base of it, seems pretty simple, right? You automate your marketing and everything sort of runs electronically, digitally. Um, but I now know, <laughs> having kind of pulled it apart with you guys, that there's a lot more to it than that, and it needs yeah. the, that technical uh, experience that um, you bring to the subject. So, I mean, this is my kind of I'm I'm a you know I'm a rookie in all of this, but I'm interested. I'm an interested rookie, and I expect there are a lot of business owners out there that are interested rookies, but they just don't know how to put it together. Um, so, when we talk marketing automation. Uh, what does that mean to you when you're talking to a, a rookie client? What 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 is it that you can do with that marketing automation for their business? Do you think? Well, marketing automation is really about trying to reach the the, the widest group of potential customers that you can with the minimum amount of effort. And and the one thing as business owners that we have, the most precious thing you have is time. Yeah. Time for your family, time for your business, time for washing the car. You know, it's it's all a time crunch. So marketing automation is all about trying to reach the maximum number of people that you possibly can with the minimum effort. So, you know, if somebody is, let's say, a hairdresser, truthfully, for, for them, digital marketing could probably be a Facebook page with a booking system and an Instagram account. And why do I say both of those? because Facebook and Instagram appeal to different audiences. So if you want to appeal to the more mature ladies, you've got to be on Facebook. If you want to appear to the younger crowd, you need to be on Instagram. So it's very much about now knowing that if I want to get people to come into my hair salon and book, tick, book uh, appointments, those are the two digital platforms I play on. How do I get people in? I, I put 
content on my Facebook pages that appeal to those groups of people, whether it's, you know, the ladies looking for the perms or the kids looking for the crazy haircuts and, and, it, and it couldn't get any wilder. So marketing automation is trying to bring all of that together. So for a bigger business, it's not just Facebook and Instagram, it's a website. But the website is not enough because most people don't know you have a website. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you've, you've now got to drive people to your website. And one of the easiest way to drive people to your website is using your social media. So now you have to have a plan. So what do the people on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter want to know about my subject of expertise? You have to have a plan to try and appeal to people on social media for them to be driven to your website. And then once they're on the website, you want to engage them. You want to tell them the things they, or you want to answer the questions they want to know answers for. Mm. And you know that is easier said than done. And you know, in a subject like ours, we can't cover every single feature and every single facet of digital marketing on a website. We try to, but there's just no way that we can cover that all. So you have to go for the low-hanging fruit first. And you know, that's the approach that we take with most of our customers. You know, we what's the low-hanging fruit? What can we get the most value from? Um, and you know, we, we've done it with you, Claire. You know, you you've had assets already written like ebooks mm. but no one was getting them so we post the ebook we make it prominently visible and then we drive people from social media from app advertising paper clicks or what have you into the website where they can get that valuable resource that you're giving away your ebook and that's you know and and the element of marketing automation we're automating People seeing the post, when they click from Facebook to the landing page on the website, we've tracked that. Mm -hmm. When they click from the web page to the download, we've tracked that. And then when they fill in their name and address or name and email address or contact details on the form, that's when we know who that person was that clicked on Facebook, what pages they've looked at. So that's what they're interested in. And now I've got their name and I've got that email address. I can start communicating with people. And, you know, I, I, we work with a lot of business owners that say, hey, I get 100,000 people hitting my website every day. Cool. <laughs> Who, what's their name? <laughs> what do they say to you? <laughs> and, and most of them. Um, they don't know most people. <laughs> yeah, they don't. And sure, I don't know everybody that comes to my website or your website but we're growing that number. Yes, yes. The insight is there, isn't it? And uh, yes, yes, that's a, yeah. I mean, it's the it, fact that we're tracking them even when we don't know who they are so that when they do disclose who they are by downloading an ebook or something like that, we marry up the past browsing history with the present browsing history and then we capture the future browsing history. So, you know, it's people's behaviours that we're catching and with those behaviours comes marketing strategy. So it's a complex subject, marketing automation. And I'm sure if you ask four different people, they'll give you four different answers for what they think it is. But that's in a nutshell, that's it. But the, the clever part of automation is that person downloaded an ebook, in your case, um, cash flow yeah. solutions. So we know that person is interested in cash flow solutions. They wouldn't have given me my net, the name and email address without that. So now we know what floats that person's boat right now. So downloading the ebook's not enough. We can then have automated email campaigns to send that person more information about cash flow, to ask them questions about cash flow. And you are communicating. The cool thing is, it's automatic. You don't have to sit there and send it to them one by one. It's all automated. It's going on 24-7. You know, you can be at home with the kids, out on the golf course, whatever you do, but your customers are being nurtured quietly and discreetly 24-7. No bank holidays, no, hol no sick days. It's continually 
going on. And that's the automation part of it. Right. And so you're, um, again, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that we met and, uh, and that we, we learned about your platform, which is Active Demand. Because um, there's a lot of platforms out there. There's Infusion stuff. There's HubSpot. Um, you know, there's. I mean, these are names that probably you know people watching this uh, uh, show group on the sofa will recognise. And I just found them incredibly complicated. When I started to pull this apart for for my company, um, it there just wasn't. Um, the support that we've received from you and from you, Mark, in the technical sense and, and from Jean in the strategic sense of, of pulling this apart and, and actually making it work. It sounds great in theory. And you may be watching this and you may be thinking, well, you three have, you know, you know what you're talking about. Honestly, you it. <laughs> I, I, I became interested in this because I wanted to reach a lot of people and I wasn't going to be able to reach them by printing brochures and sending them out in envelopes. And I wasn't going to be able to reach them through um, traditional means. And I wanted to cover a lot of ground. And, and of course, that's what my aim has been. And driving traffic to my website, uh, Share Group's website. I say mine because it's, it's, it's my baby. Uh, it's my third child. How sad is that? I've got two real children. No, we're always bad. The business is ours. <laughs> yeah, and that's how it gets you, isn't it? Digital marketing. Yeah. marketing. It gets you like it, it's like you know the thing that you've got to conquer in your business. Um, but if you do and you can embrace it and you can have people like you guys to help, um, it's it's fantastic uh, what your business can achieve. So I mean, now you've talked, Mark, about Facebook and Instagram. Um, and hairdressers, and I want to give a shout out to my hairdresser in Norfolk, Selena Hamilton Morris, because she's fantastic. She's on Instagram. Um, I think she's on Facebook as well. Um, but um, how does that differ to email marketing, which to me is another channel? That's just another channel of communication with customers. So how does that fit into your your overall? So in another bit of digital marketing parlance. Yeah, we are an omni-channel platform, so that means okay. that you need to stop there. What does omni-channel mean to you? And there you go. So <laughs> there you go. It's digital marketing speak. Omni-channel is something that's been uh, banded about in about the last two years. It's bringing all the channels into one place. And why is that important? Well. <laughs> a few years ago people didn't necessarily think it was important um if you sent an email out using one of the off the shelf email platforms you knew how many of them were opened didn't you mm. Mm. and then last year apple came out with ios 15 and now every email that is sent to somebody on uh, an apple mobile device is pre-opened before they get the email. So it's opened by Apple. Um, so that means that the old fashioned information that you had about your email marketing, it doesn't work anymore because you don't actually know how many people opened your email. Were they opened by Apple or were they opened by the recipient? You don't know. And then Traditional email marketing won't tell you how many people click through to your website because there's no website tracking. Yeah. Um, and then it's, it's useful up to a point. Now, I do know a lot of SMEs used to use the open rates as a reason to pick up the telephone and call everybody that had opened an email. But, of course, now if they did that, probably 50% of those people would say, I never opened the email. I I've never seen it. I don't know what you're talking about. So this is where omni-channel marketing started to become a thing that people were looking at. How do we bring all of this together into one platform? How do we have email marketing, the aggregated data from our pay-per-click campaigns, our Google Analytics data, our um, retargeting campaigns, how do we bring all of that into, oh, and then social media. How do we bring social media in as well? Mm. 
So omnichannel is the result. It's the it's a platform that aggregates data from all of those things. And it allows you to place your email marketing directly from the platform and to do scheduled social media posting for, for months in advance if you want to. Um, it allows you to join up the website so that you can track the movement between email or social media and your website. Um, you start to aggregate the data on your prospects. You know that they opened an email because they clicked on the link. Yeah, they clicked on the link, which is a trackable link within your platform. So suddenly you're joining up all the dots, you're square in the circle and you know what is actually going on with your campaign. And that's where marketing automation platforms have the edge over straightforward email marketing. Just to put it slightly differently, a lot of people have lots of apps doing lots of little things. So you've got a Facebook app, you've got a social media app, you've got a, an email marketing app, you've got a landing page app, mm -hmm. and you've got little bits of personal information about all of the people visiting you, but you haven't got it all in one place. So you, you don't necessarily know their names. Mm. So by by bringing all of those little pieces of information together into one place. Now you know who somebody is, now you know what they look at, how often they look at it, what time of day they look at it. So wouldn't it be cool if someone opens their email at 7.30 in the morning when they have their cornflakes, wouldn't that be the best time to send them an email? Yeah. And not in the middle of the night on Saturday when they're out somewhere. So it, it's collating all of that information together and then using the intelligence that you now get from it. And that's, that's where people often miss the boat where they've got, you know, a MailChimp app and they've got a landing page app and a, a bit of information in Google and some in Facebook. They're not seeing the whole picture of that one person. No. That's what you want to do. <clears throat> and we want to do that <clears throat> as business owners because we actually want to create a professional image around our business. We want to treat our visitors and our existing customers, but also our potential prospects as um, people that we understand. And we're, you know, we're in tune with what they are looking at on our websites and the, the area hmm. of interest to them. And therefore, this, in, this insight that uh, Active Demand gives us, um, I suppose some people might say is a bit, <coughs> excuse me, it's a bit big brother. But on the other it's hand, spooky. yeah. But on the other hand, isn't it better to receive? Uh, and we're all subject to this anyway, aren't we? It's happening in our in our life anyway through Google and, and Amazon and everything. That we are we are looking at the products and services that are of interest to us, rather than a whole noise of stuff out there that it is just uh, not of interest yeah. and people annoying. You. Yeah, I mean, we, we do work for we do work for car, for car dealerships. Yeah. So if one of your customers, an older lady, has been looking at red Ford Fiestas for six months, why would you send her a special offer on pickup trucks? Exactly. Yeah. So send her a special offer for the finance on red Ford Fiestas. Yeah. Not pickup trucks. Yeah. And that's. That's the, that's the beauty of knowing what that lady likes. You're not going to bore her with pickup trucks that she can't even step up into, let, let alone buy. Keep to what she knows, what she loves, what she's been looking for, and eventually you'll send her something that will make her say, I'm going to go buy that car today. Yeah. Yeah, it puts mm -hmm. the customer, doesn't it, front and centre, which yes. is not. And the beauty is, by automating it, you can actually – have the platform do all that for you mm -hmm. you yeah. can actually have filters in place so that you know what a customer wants and you do deliver what they're looking for yes. um, it, and that's the most important thing you know is being able to understand the customer's behavior and being able to draw your own marketing conclusions from that so that you actually deliver a better service yeah to that customer yeah and, and of course because it's automated um the the use of humans in the process um you know as a business owner you can rejig perhaps your marketing and sales personnel you can rejig your uh resources somewhere else in the business to to you know 
um, I think you've called my guy a, an active demand ninja. You know, you can you can kind of retool uh, people's skill sets to be able to get Absolutely. to tech and, and do it themselves. Um, and so that the cost of doing this becomes very affordable, um, certainly cheaper than employing perhaps marketing or sales professionals um, when the system is doing the heavy lifting of, of getting the volume out there. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> so that's where I see the tech really, because really what, what we've done in Sharegroup, as you know, is we have our humans talking to people and solving problems, not sending emails anymore. Um, and and that's, yeah. the, that's the beauty because then your resource is larger yeah. without having a bigger headcount. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, that's that's another great plus point of this. If anyone's listening to this and going, well, I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I, I can't afford this, I, I would really urge you to talk to Jean and Mark and, and look at the affordability of not doing it um, as opposed to, you know, letting that be an instant barrier. Um, I think it's something yeah. that all businesses of any shape or size can take a look at, you know, in in relative to their size. Now, you are obviously, uh, I mean, this product is uh, can cross any industry. Um, what are the main industry sectors that you are working in um, with this product at the moment? So, as Mark touched on, we will work in automotive. And in fact, our very, very first customer was an automotive client, it was a, a large Ford dealership. And, and we still, six years later, we're still working with them. And we, we love the fact that we have a customer that's been with us for the entire journey. And he was a great customer because um, he allowed us to experiment right at the beginning when we first started. So big shout out to Tom Collar, ex BNI. So another bin, another BNI person that crossed our paths. Um, we also work really, really well with marketing agencies because we are able to offer um, a portal where all their clients can be held in one place. Mm. They don't, they're not constantly logging in and logging out, and logging in and logging out. They have all their clients from one portal. And that also gives them the ability to aggregate data about their results as well. And that sort of um, information they can put out there, you know, we're getting, yeah. you know, 60% open rates for our emails or 40% click-through rates. They can do that because they're able to aggregate that data for them. Um, we also work with software as a service. So other software providers like us who work on subscription or annual contracts um, and the reason we work really well is we're able to do timed events so we're able to do things like open trial accounts and then guide the customer through the 14-day trial to the end of the trial so okay yeah so we're able to do that um, and our most recent market sector that we're working in is the integrated retirement communities so people who are building beautiful um, communities with in, in-house services and restaurants and bars for people over 65. So that's been a really interesting area to work for. And that's, that's very new to us. That's something that we've only been doing for a little while. Um, but it has been an enjoyable process. Mm. So those are our main ones at the moment. But like you say, um, we have worked with people in financial services. Um, the system works brilliantly on insur insurance and mortgage providers. You um, you forgot software as a service, Jean. No, she did I mention know. that. I think she mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, she did. But what I want to say to you is, um, I mean, obviously, Mark, you've been out in, in Houston and you've worked with a, a customer over in Saudi Arabia, Arabia. I mean, am I right that you... Um, you're not really banned by geography. I mean, is this a global platform that you're building or, you know, where, whereabouts can you operate yeah. this from? In, in all honesty, it's, it's a cloud-based system. So it doesn't matter where in the world you are, you can connect to it. Yeah. You can reach, if someone has an internet connection, you can reach them. Yeah. So if if they if they can receive emails, you can reach them. If they can receive phone calls and text messages, we can reach them with with the same 
idea. So back in 2012, when I got involved with digital marketing and, and active demand was my introduction to that. Predominantly, what we would do is just be doing every quarter an email campaign about certain subjects that were relevant. And we would send those to our customers on the four corners of the globe, you know, from South Africa to Saudi Arabia to Alaska, um, southern you know, Argentina. The whole world was receiving our messaging. And in order for me to, I was based in Houston, in order for me to go to Saudi Arabia, which was a huge market for us, it was a big, it was a big deal. Yeah. Visas, yeah. work permits, yeah. um, cultural missions. What class and, do you fly? Do you fly first yeah. or coach or business or coach? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it it was a big deal to go there, and you know, you would go for two weeks because you know it, it took a you know, better part of a day to to get there and get back and and recover from it, and and it was a huge cost. Mm. So, you know, the email marketing to allow us to message these people without, ha like you said, having to lick an envelope, put a letter or a brochure in it, and mail it. The costs, you know, were came down to a penny for my time to write the email instead of $10 to print the brochure and send it. So there was a massive saving in cost. It's convenient because our customers were getting it on their mobile phones and desktops. So we deliver that message at least twice uh, and they see our message at least twice on the desktop and the mobile phone. And our brand awareness went up people liked receiving information from us. We were giving, we were telling them things about our industry. And, and that's really how the realization that this is the way to go and getting on an airplane once a year is fine. I don't need to do it four times a year anymore. Hmm. And, you know, using these types of marketing and sales outreach methods, um, close million dollar deals. I'm sure. And, yeah, I'm sure. And, you know, Zoom, it wasn't existing then, but GoToMeeting did exist. Oh, yeah, GoToMeeting. And we could, do, we could do demos in 2012 over the internet. We didn't have to go to people's offices to do them. It was just customary that people expected you to go there. They could look you firmly in the eye and feel the strength of your handshake. Um, and if the pandemic has changed one aspect about the, the business, it's very much that, you know, we'll just do a Zoom meeting. We can get this done. We can do the demo, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that, that's been a, you know, a big step forward for us that we don't have to fly off you know, across the world or to another city like London just to show somebody what we do. No. And in fact, we can actually do a better, we, we can do a better job online than we can face to face yeah. and that's that's actually been really true during the pandemic um we have been able to see four or five digital marketing agencies a day and demo the product wow during this time whereas in the past i would have had to travel to their city and then i would try and fix four or five appointments over a two-day period if I were going, and then I would arrive and their audio visual wouldn't work or I'd have yep. 10 people trying to ha ham in around one PC to, to look at the, the demo. It doesn't happen anymore. They all log on and they watch a, a Zoom presentation and I can have 10, 20 people on a demonstration all asking questions afterwards. So this platform works so brilliantly in that, kind of respect and of course during the pandemic people worked from home so anybody that didn't have cloud-based software for bringing together their marketing campaigns really suffered so th this platform for the agencies that were using this platform it, it was the way to go I mean isn't that I think that's a positive outcome from COVID that we have uh, many of us I, I don't know if it's everyone but many business owners have learned that their business can benefit from having, or indeed is vital to have an online presence and an online way of continuing to do business if the rest of the world is, is going crazy and locking down and, and whatever. And so I don't, you know, I, I, I'm, I, 
I hope there won't be another COVID. But I, you know, I think if any of us got hit with that again, we'd all be better prepared. But I think what this system does is it builds resilience into a business owner's marketing plan and business plan so that they can carry on doing business um, in the future with online customers. Now, of course, that doesn't work for everybody. Um, but, you know, for those of us that can swap out to online, um, then this system is is vital. And, and Zoom is, you know, the, now the go to. I'm sure there'll be something that will, you know, come along and, uh, and just think about the good that it's doing to the, pla- the, 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 the planet as well. I mean, all those air miles that we were all clocking up oh, over the years. Phenomenal. The carbon that we put into the atmosphere. Oh, and phenomenal. That stops now. If people yeah. carry on doing business in this way, <clears throat> better for the, pla- uh, yeah. for, the, for the planet. No, absolutely. So, um, well, I'm very pleased that you're doing something with the retirement community and getting people prepped for retirement. That's something that in the States, as you know, it's much more familiar um, giving people a nice environment for their retirement. Uh, and I hope that that finds its way more and more into British culture as uh, more and more of us are going to be, you know, living longer and we want somewhere nice to retire to. So let's hope that that um, um, happens in the future. Um, so when companies come to you, I mean, and I don't know that you would probably talk to anyone that came to you with a, with a request. Um, what are the problems that your um you know typically what are the problems that they want you to solve what what do they want you to do with your magic wand and figure out i when when we talk to customers initially they can tell you whatever story it is that they have but the ultimate problem that they have they want more sales more yeah. revenue yeah let's not, that, that, let's not sugar that, that. <laughs> that, that, that's what they're ultimately after yeah so if they need more sales or more revenue or income mm-hmm. however you want to express it you've got to convert more people from yeah. surfers on your website to fee paying customers yeah so in order to do that you have to look at your conversion mechanisms how do you get them from a surfer to a customer and that's one area that we do have the expertise and look at how do you move someone along from being an idle surfer that dropped on your website to someone that's now willing to give you their credit card yeah and then the next stage on that is how do you get more people to find your website so you know we we don't do seo for example search engine optimization which helps your website appear higher in google rankings that's not something that we do albeit you know we know a bad one when we see one uh, and can help people go from 350 to maybe 45 but you know we might struggle to get you beyond 45 on google but that's the ultimate goal that most people want more sales or more income you've got to then look at how you get people from the person that just dropped on your website and went all over it it was interesting but they didn't buy anything or they didn't engage with you. And the first step is to get somebody engaging. And that's where, you know, the, the, the ebooks or um, yeah. downloadables, yeah. that kind of thing. You're, you're giving something away. In the industry, it's called a lead magnet. But, uh, yeah. you know, it's, that, that's, that's the point behind it. You're going to give something in exchange for a name and an email address. And it's becoming more important because up to 70% of the buying journey is done online without anybody interacting with you. You don't know who they are. They're they're just coming onto your website. They might come back again and again and again before they actually purchase. Yes. You don't know who they are. So Mark's right. The important thing is to get them to tell you who they are and then you can join up what they're looking at. Yes, I mean... We've come to you and, and we've um, engaged you as our marketing automation experts using active demand. I think we're getting a lot of other value as well. We're getting two very experienced marketeers sort of benchmarking um, our um, our website and our little show groupies, which is, is great for us. But I mean, um, when we started really knuckling down onto this, we were in exactly the situation that Mark said. We, we put our website up and um, and we started Google Analytics, but we didn't know who was coming to the site. And, you know, and, and data doesn't fib. 
you know, data is data. And if you've got analytics and you've got then the insight from active demand, then you can really start to build that picture. And as a business owner, I think sometimes when you ask your team, and I love my team to bits, you know that, but, you know, you ask your team, did we have any hits on the web? Did we have anyone come to the website today? Did we have any calls into the office today? And everyone goes, no, no, I think so. No, not today. And you think, well, what is it that we're not doing right? What, what is it that I've got to do to, to, to get those people to come to my shop? And when you start to see the data as a business owner, then you can start and say, okay, well, now I start to understand. I got some people in, but they didn't stay or they came to this page. They didn't stay very long. So I need to change that page around. And I think, you know, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the job of the business owner and the leadership team in a business to understand this if you really want to get more sales. You can delegate it to your sales team. You can delegate it to your marketing team. But you've got to understand that, you know, what are they doing? And is it the right thing? Are they saying the right thing? Are they promoting the right thing? Um, because not every business has a, you know, a hugely interesting story. And you're probably sitting there as a business owner listening to this and going, well, you know, I make widgets. You know, I don't, you know, what, what is interesting about my business? Why would anyone want a downloadable from me? What is an ebook? You know, I just make widgets. Right. Well, I bet your company in Houston made widgets, posh widgets, yep. but widgets yep. just the same. And somehow somebody in the world wanted those widgets. And, and that's what I want to say to anyone watching this is what Gene and Mark will do is they will take your what you consider to be your, I don't know, boring content, you know, because you're, you're not doing something flashy on Instagram or Facebook. You're just doing what you do. You've always done it the same. And they transform it into this digital piece where suddenly you're connecting just with a whole audience that was looking for that widget. That very widget that you made that you only thought somebody wanted in XYZ postcode or XYZ zip code, suddenly they want it in Saudi Arabia or they want yep. it in Australia, you know, and you'll be going down. And it, is, yeah. it is just really finding a way through to those markets. So identifying what the market is. Yeah, which you're very good at. Growth. You're great at that. You know, you, you can get, I can see you as a marketeer, you're getting under the skin of, what we do and what your other clients are doing and and saying okay well you know this is how you can you know navigate this yeah um, this and, and that is having that and working with visionary clients really helps um we, we work with a number of clients and and i guess you're at the forefront of this who've got <laughs> this bigger picture in mind um and and sometimes not everyone agrees with them up until the point where the vision starts to take shape and then everyone says, now I understand what you do. <laughs> oh, Jean, that is so true. That is so true. And you, as a business owner, and I, I'm just talking to business owners, you know, this is the whole point of Show Group Online, because whatever problem you have in your business, trust me, I have had that in building Show Group. I completely empathise. And you are standing there on your own going, we need a bigger shop. We need to do this. We need to go abroad. We need to, and everyone's going, why? 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 Well, because COVID came along and you only had a small shop and you only sold in NR13. And suddenly all your customers were on the other side of the world. You know, it's, it's, it's protection um, yeah. of your business, uh, which you as a business owner are investing in. It's your pension fund. It's your value. And at the end of the day, nobody will, no one, you know, you, 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 you can be on your own standing there trying to build this. Um, I mean, I've been very lucky. I've got tremendous people around me. But even at the end of the day, in the middle of the night, they're not the ones thinking about, why didn't I get any traffic on my website? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that is the point of, it um, is frightening though when you wake up in the middle of the night and <laughs> that's the first thing that comes on your mind well that you know that's the roller coaster we all ride right that's when we're yeah. running our own businesses yeah. we we have to we have to take that on board but how much nicer if you can go well 
when I get up in the morning, I'll have a report from, you know, lead intuition. It will tell me all the customers did look at my website yesterday and, oh, that's nice. I didn't know they looked at us and I didn't know they looked at us. And, oh, you know, um, it, it's, a, it's a nice feeling. I think that's one of the hidden benefits of digital marketing, that you ultimately finish up with this big pile of information about who's coming to your website, when are they coming, what pages are they looking at, which one, which page of yours gets the most hits every month? Yeah. Why does it get my? And you know, you've got one or two surprising ones, Claire. Without you know going too deep, you've some surprising pages that get hits. Yeah. That's cool. How can we use that? Exactly. How can we leverage those hits to our business advantage? And that's so, the part that gives me the thrill. Yeah, I, I, I see that as you're looking at our stuff. <laughs> um, but, I mean, what do you think are the current trends in digital marketing? I mean, you know, we, we've got to this point. What, what's going to happen in the next, say, two years? Certainly at the moment, you, you hear a lot about AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, Truthfully, AI and machine learning are still at very elementary stages. And when people talk about artificial intelligence, a human has built that intelligence. The machine is not building it. The, it's not building its own intelligence. So with artificial intelligence, people have to build you know, the, the questions in order for the computer to answer them yeah. and sort out you know, a million balls into three little balls at the bottom of the, the funnel. So those things are still in their elementary stages. Most marketing automation platforms have the ability to do intelligence. It's, it's not the true definition of artificial, but we can sift through millions of pieces of data to find you know, how many people in the law profession came on your website yesterday or how many people were interested in the legal pages on your website, how many people had a chat where the word lawyer was mentioned yesterday if you then start building that up you can start targeting people looking for legal services yeah. because you're analyzing all of that information from the millions you know the, the ten thousand people that were on your website yesterday we can come up with okay there's 15 people here that were looking at this particular subject why don't we contact them and we can contact them by email or because you know where they're on the website and you know they gave you their phone number, give them a phone call and just ask the question, do you need some help? Yeah. It doesn't have to be a hard sell this time. You know, it can just be a simple message. So very much the industry is moving towards this um, intelligence of sorting through all the data we're amassing and then personalizing any responses out to people and it's you know personalization we've been able to use hello mark in emails since almost day one that's not personalization the personalization is looking at the information they they are unknowingly giving you like the pages they look at they're all on a similar theme and then putting you know a paragraph in an email that's about those pages that they've looked at and you're doing it automatically so yeah you're going to use their first name last name and their employer somewhere in that mix but they've looked at this type of material on the website we're going to put a paragraph in the email that addresses that piece of surfing that they did on your website yesterday that's the deep personalization that people are now talking about that you and i expect when we go on a website yeah. you know i'm sure you've got an amazon account just like i have I don't want to receive anything about red lipstick, but you know, you show me something about a, a Google hard drive or something like that. Yeah, I'm all over it. Amazon knows, Google knows, Facebook knows. Oh yeah, they do. They're listening in. Yep. And how do they know? Because they're just collecting the data. Just like you are now yeah. on your team, you're collecting that data. You're a mini Google. Yeah, well, we we want to get we want to serve up the right information to our visitors mm. and our customers. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's smart stuff, and I, I take my leaf. You know, when I look at Share Group, I look at Amazon, and I go, well, you know, he started selling books in the garage, right? Yeah. Um, you know, but he does he sells a lot more than that now. 
So, um, you know, wherever you are in the world, if, you, if you're just selling one thing, look at Amazon and think of Jeff Bezos and think, well, he can do it, I can do it. Why not? Totally. Well, this is what I try and tell people, that, you know, you might only sell one thing, but you don't only have one type of customer. No. <laughs> You've yeah. got, you know, senior customers, old customers, com customers that are big companies, customers that are one-man bands. You know, there is no such thing as, you know, a single product company with a single customer. No. no. <laughs> Might be one product, but you've got 100 different customers that you've got to try and appeal to. Yes. And the system takes the heavy lifting out and yes. allows you to do yeah. that. So if that all seems terribly complicated to you, I'm, I'm, I'm advocating that you talk to Jean and Mark um, and, and get them to look at your business and look at what the platform could do for you because you're probably worrying unnecessarily and you're probably paralyzed by really not grasping the nettle of digital marketing because it all seems too much and overwhelming. And actually, it, it's much easier than it, it might first appear. Now, um, so um, what are some of the digital marketing practices that you see that you think, oh, my God, shouldn't be doing that? What, what do you see that you think people should avoid? The number one thing, if you as a website owner, look at your website. And, you know, when you open up a website page, before you scroll up or down, when you look at the page, and does it tell you who you are, what you're selling, and how can you and how can I get it? And the number of websites that I go to that are they've got flashy high resolution graphics moving all over the place. I haven't got a clue what you're selling. And even scrolling to the bottom of the page, I'm not sure what you're trying to tell me or get me to buy or sell. <laughs> oh, <God. clears throat> so so you know when someone lands on a website it it's reckoned you've got three to four seconds to capture their attention yes so you know there needs to be some kind of imagery that says what you're selling but you're going to need you know a company name and how to get in contact with you a, a book a demo a book a, a contact us button something and the number of people that have moved away from that and they wonder why you know they get a lot of hits but no inter no engagement it's because people go there and think um no I'm the I'll move. Place. <laughs> yeah the wrong place yeah what do you say about that jane what do you see that makes you cringe my number one thing is linkedin profiles and i haven't got a clue what the person does do you ever look at somebody's linkedin profile and think i don't know what you are i had one yesterday reach out to me wanting to connect and i looked at the profile and I don't know what business you're in. I haven't got a clue what your business does. That You're not giving me any incentive to, to allow you to connect here. And I think in the B2B market, we all work so much on LinkedIn that, that that's something that's really quite important. Yeah. So that's my, my number one beef. Mark's got dozens of them, though. Yeah. Well, LinkedIn for, for B2B is, is very important. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a huge, it's our most important channel on social media. And I, you know, I, I've got my team to be more cool on Instagram. They're, they're working on that. And, you know, they've got different, but it, LinkedIn is, you know, where we, we, we pick up a, a lot of interest um, from traditional markets like lawyers and accountants. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're saying. Mm. So it, but it, as Jean says, it's about having that same image on the website and having the same image on your LinkedIn account. Do people look at LinkedIn and say, oh, OK, you're in digital marketing? Or yeah. do they look at it and think, um, OK, not, not sure? Well, I suppose we just developed the share groupie so we can be in whatever we want to be in. <laughs> we can but, make them jump but, through hoops. <laughs> but the cool thing about that is, Claire, you took a space and claimed it yeah. with the sheer groupies. Yeah. And, you know, other people weren't doing it. Other people maybe weren't brave. You know, you've got some brave colors on your website and so on. But maybe deliberately or inadvertently, you created a brand. Yes. And, yes. and that's what a lot of people miss that, you know, you can create a brand, you can have a color palette, that's fine. Stick to it and make sure it's seen everywhere so that every time someone sees you know, a, 
a deep purple type of website, even if it doesn't say it, they're thinking sheer group. Yeah. or sheer groupies yeah. uh, and you, you did something very clever there that you claimed the sheer groupie image name genre and you're run and you're running with it and that's giving you an identity online um you know and it doesn't matter whether it's facebook linkedin twitter twitch right. wh wherever you go yeah deep deep purple to me i'm i'm, I'm always thinking sheer group <laughs> well that's it's recognizable it's it was my it was the icing color on my 16th birthday cake that's where it comes from <laughs> um, and i haven't changed my favorite color since then um did you get a pony i didn't get a pony no oh. <laughs> <laughs> not at 16 i was past ponies mark by then um okay <laughs> So, um, but what I do think is that, you know, again, just for anyone that's listening to this and going, well, how do I do that? Go to Canva. Canva's cheap as chips. Go to iStock Photo, but, you know, look at the uh, vectors on iStock Photo. That's where the show groupies came from originally. Um, we didn't kind of like have some expensive artists to build these up. We went to iStock um, for royalty free, so we couldn't get into any trouble with anyone. We pay our subscription. And we went to Canva and now we manipulate that uh, content. And, uh, you know, again, there are plenty of people out there, that marketing agencies, we do it. There's plenty of people out there that can help you um, if you have an idea and a creative idea you want to go with. Um, don't feel stuck, again, um, as a business owner. Um, You're so right about that, Claire, because... I think sometimes not having huge budgets will create inertia in some companies. Yes, it does, of course. So they'll say, oh, well, I haven't got the money for a graphic designer, so they don't do stuff. Yeah. Whereas what you've just described, anyone can do. Yeah, yeah. Get your kids to do it. You know, you might say, well, I haven't got a clue about Canva. I bet your teenage boy or girl has. You know, there's going to be people in your family, in your network, who just love doing this stuff just as yeah. a creative and uh, and they're doing it already on their own Instagram account. Um, um, so, you know, just just use the use all your network, not just uh, paying for it. Use your <laughs> drag your kids in. Yeah. And use them to help you build your your social media and give you some a, a, a cool image as well. I get my daughter to comment on our on our stuff. <laughs> and uh yeah, she likes it, which is good, because if she didn't, she'd soon tell me. Um, OK, so there's a couple of technical things I wanted to ask you, just because we're coming to the close. But so pretty quickly, I mean, um, Google, we've all got to make a friend of Google, but Google banning cookies. What, what are they doing? What, what, what's, what's happening? OK, so when you go on somebody's website, you get cookied. Yeah. And you're being cookied by Google Analytics. You're being cookied by the Facebook Pixel. Uh, you're being cookied by potentially their own cookies. Some of those cookies they need just to render the pictures and so on on your computer. Some of those cookies are tracking cookies. They're, they're following you. Some of those cookies pass information back to Google, like Claire just looked at a pair of red shoes. So the next time that you go on another website, that pair of red shoes is just following you around. Yeah, that's true. Now, yeah. a, lot of people, a lot of people don't know, potentially with Google, that pair of red shoes can follow you around for three years. You could be served up that pair of red shoes on other websites wherever you go up to three years. So there are companies called aggregators and they are collecting data from anybody that will give it to them. So Facebook, Google, um, you know, they, they, they sell data, not necessarily personalized, but they'll sell access to the data. But you know, there's, you could belong to, um, one of these football, um, leagues where you predict the results or your dream team that, little team there or that little website there is giving data to data aggregators and you know maybe you look at a result service for sports and so on and they're giving data to data aggregators and these aggregators are building profiles of you so that you know you've you know, the other day i looked at a, another computer on um uh um hp's website 
And within two minutes, HP computers were following me around everywhere I went on the internet. That information is being shared. That's the cookies that Google have said they will stop. Okay, so they're going to stop. So these. they are going. They are going to stop aggregating third-party cookies. Okay. The one cookie they cannot and won't be stopping is first-party cookies, and first-party cookies are the cookies that, or is the information you collect from your customer. So you. A sheer group owner website, the information that you collect on people when they come on your website is yours. Lock, stock, it's and barrel. Data. It's yeah. called first party data. Okay. It's the third party data where people are selling you information about people out there and you then start to use it. That's the one that Google is going to stop. Now, Google was one of the biggest providers of that information. So there's a uh, Google is offering another alternative called Sandbox. We don't know so much about it just yet. And Google was supposed to be stopping third-party cookies or allowing them to be part of the Google search um, next year. We, we've heard that they've put that off another year simply because most of their advertisers weren't ready mm. for, for the alternative. Mm. And, and customers now is the time to be collecting your own first-party data. So now is the time with a lot of retailers where you'll see them running competitions for people to apply on social media and supply their name and email address. So you will see people start to aggregate large quantities of data between now and when Google shuts off the third party system because once they've got that first party data, they can continue to market to their customers without Google being able to interact in any way. So now's the golden hour. If, you're, if you don't know who your customers are, now is the time that you should be aggregating that data. You should be encouraging your customers to let you know who they are. You should be setting up online communities that customers can become part of you should be setting up competitions that they can enter that will allow you to collect their data. All of this is really important at the moment because it, they will shut it off at some point. And when that happens, it's too late. Now's the time. I guess um, just to answer to that, um, for some people listening to this, this may seem an all very big brother um, and, you know, uh, the world is, you know, watching you and following you. And, and I would just like to say in response to that, that if you find yourself feeling like that, um, first of all, you know, you've got to know who your customers are and you've got to build a profile of them if you really want to kind of market to them and expand your market. But also, I think what you can do as a business, if that all seems a little, I don't know, it's like making you think, oh, I don't know. Um, you know, think of it more as building a community. You're, you're building a community of prospects and customers. And I know from Share Group's point of view that we, we help a lot of people. Um, and if we don't get you into our community, we can't help you. Um, and so we're looking for you because we want to be able to help you. We want to be helpful to help you if you're watching our TV show um, because you have a real problem. And I know, and my team know, that there aren't many people out there actually trying to solve your problem. And so when you come into our community, we give back. We give back advice. We give a lot of free advice. We give a lot of downloadables. Um, and that will continue. And if you're a business owner that can give as well as receive, then, you know, give, you know, give whatever it is. You give the competitions, yes, but... Give the insight, give your expertise, you know, share, get on video and share your expertise with your community. Tell them why you're the best person at selling those widgets, why they should buy from you and not the guy down the road. You know, make make yourself the expert in your community and let them know that you're a good guy because you are, you know, you're just trying to grow your business. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's all totally on point. We're all trying to do that. And anyone that says that they're not, anyone says that they're not interested in growing their business, wake up because that's what you're in business for you know you're there to grow your business and achieve sales and you're there to make your business resilient to things like covid which we've all learned a tough lesson from 
Yep. So, guys, I mean, that's a great um, kind of, um, well, I'm going to say skim the surface of what you do. The only way that you can develop this conversation is to uh, make an appointment. Um, you have a calendar system, right, to um, people to contact you so they can come on to your website. Uh, Jean, what is your website? Just tell me. It's HTTPS. Yeah colon backslash backslash lead intuition l-e-a-d intuition dot co dot uk okay so we'll put that in the show notes so you'll be able to pick up lead intuitions contact whatever social media mark whatever you want to link to uh, in the show notes you need to send us those links so we can put those in the show notes for you guys um and I would encourage you to have an exploratory conversation with Jean and Mark, because honestly, um, if you want to build out digitally, this is a great place. These are great people, very down to earth, very feet on the ground people who will understand your business and not give you a load of mumbo jumbo. OK, it's really important as a business owner, you get right into this topic and I think Jean and Mark are a really great resource and I, I feel so blessed to have met you both um, you know which was more by well that's life isn't it you just put yourself out there and you never know who you're going to meet so really great to have you guys as part of our community um, for everyone else I hope this has given you a taste of what the show group is doing what show group is doing why we do what we do with our marketing thank you to everybody who receives our marketing and doesn't unsubscribe um we love you uh and we want you to stay in our community we've got so much stuff coming down the line to help business owners you can see us on tv being the tough guys but we're also you know we recognize that if we help you build a strong business you will never have a knock on the door from uh, a bailiff and so it's in our gift to um to help build up strong businesses um, and build strong cash flow for you. So thank you so much for being part of our community, for watching this very important show group on the sofa. Um, and you can find us at showgroup.com. Um, you can find us on Facebook. Just put show group into anything. It will come up, won't it, Mark? I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're building our channels. <laughs> we're doing well. <laughs> so, you know, and yeah, you may get a phone call from a show groupie talking about, well, what, did, you know, what, what are you interested in? You, you you know just t tell us well, how business is doing how are you doing we're interested in you um and um, i know gene and mark are there to facilitate that as well all right everyone so thank you so much thanks guys for a great interview we appreciate it pleasure all right and we'll all talk thank again you. soon bye, bye everyone bye all right bye. cheers bye guys thanks for listening to the share groupie podcast to join our Share Groupie community, subscribe by going to our website at www.sharegroup.com. Keep up with the latest Share Group news across all our main channels, including YouTube, LinkedIn, and across all social media. Stay connected and begin building more business relationships.